So today I'm making uh, more bioplastic mm, for this guy here. Uh, it's hardening nicely, and I'm going to put another layer of silk on that'll wrap the whole thing and kind of make it look a little more like a wing. I, I really wanted to round this, but I didn't do it in time. Um, so it dried hard and flat, kind of, except where I bent it at first. Um, but it's, uh, you know, flat, straightened out a little bit. Um, but this part remained bent, and it, what we want to do is make an airfoil, all right, so that uh, it, it gives lift. And you can't just, like, go like this. And, I mean, you can, I guess, but it won't fly. What you need to do is um, have, like, a rounded edge on the front with a, with a curve that'll provide lift like a bird's wing, right? So we're aiming at a shape like a bird's wing here. And what I've done is taken my, my special bioplastic here, totally non-toxic. <laughs> Every school kid knows it's non-toxic. And this, which is a baby wipe, okay? It's not actually a paper, it's a baby wipe. And I added the um, Elmer's glue to it so that uh, I can roll it up and stick it in there and shape it. So I'll be back in a minute. So we're back, and um, you know I got a few other things in the mail today, um, including this little unit from my uh, good friend Lisa in Texas for my wife. Uh, my wife uh, bought this, and Lisa sent it on this nice piece of. Uh, she thinks it's a rock. It's a piece of platinum, weighs about a kilo. And that's what it is. And, uh, you know, if you don't believe me, I can uh, do a specific gravity test. I'll have her send me some more. Um, but it is, like, seriously heavy. She says it's marble. Huh? She says it's marble. I think. Yeah, well... That's what it's called. It's called marble, she says, and it's not actually marble. It's not marbled, right? Marble has marbles. I mean, you know, like lines and stuff through it. This is a... Um, there's another name for it, and I forget. I have to look it up. Um, but one of the ways, the actually the only way to identify this kind of mineral, right? There's, there, we can we can maybe scratch it and that sort of stuff. Of course, I'm not going to. It's my wife, and um, and it's it's handmade by lovely Lisa uh, for us. She's very crafty. She she sent us a, a, an extra little gift, and she does these by hand. Her name is is um, Lisa von Shelton. And she's in Texas. She's, she can be found on Facebook. And she does these by hand. She paints them by hand. Um, and it came wrapped in hand-dyed silk. Just right for airplanes. How about that? She's lovely. She keeps track of me. And she knew I would like um, a little piece of silk. So, and then I got my feng shui dragons, my turtle dragons. 
Aren't those cool, huh? Look at that. And, and these are handmade. Handmade. They, they are not like stamped out. And this is real heavy. I, I guess it's a, like some sort of ceramic on the bottom or something. I don't know. Anyway, it's heavy. They, they put something heavy in there. Um, so it won't tip over because it's not heavy up on top. It's They say it's a, like a... Um, Well, some, it's a bioplastic, and, and you know what it is from China, right? It's um, shellac. Probably A-U-P-T in the bottom, maybe that piece of gold-looking stuff there is a piece of A-U-P-T cut and shaped for the bottom of the turtles, which is cool because it's real heavy. Okay, and then I got these guys. Look at these little guys. These are also the, the mm, resin is what they're calling it. And that's what it is, in, in fact and indeed. Um, and I think those are fire diamonds. They look like it. They're acting like fire diamonds. See, the those are not... Uh, you don't get secondary colors from... Um, Plastic, right? Plastic just has red in it. Um, and there's a um, supposedly, you know, gold paint on it or something. Um, but I don't know. And it doesn't matter. It's These are also handmade and hand-carved. And they're each um, individuals. They're not the, the same... And there's a, six of them. So I have a herd of elephants now. Um, and I'm, I'm working on a major herd of elephants. Um, there's this one. And this one. Mm, so we, we've got um, elephants at the Karoo house. Mm -hmm. A little sitting up elephant. How about that? Okay, so here we have a little diamond. And I have a bunch of those right, right over there. There's one. The, um, these are cut in China by my friend at Long Wen. And I buy them for about two or three dollars each. I don't know, something like that. Um, so you know, it's not an expensive diamond, but uh, nice, right? Nice. That's why it goes woodly woodly like that, and you don't just see straight through it, like you would a piece of glass, because the the refractive index is so high that it bends and reflects and. and makes it nice. And, and it's very heavy because I think this is not plated. I don't know that for sure, but it's really heavy. And you know what? Diamonds are not really heavy. They're really light for the size because they're just carbon. So something's making it heavy. And there's like only one choice here because the rest are diamonds. Mm, and not really good diamonds, maybe, but, mm, you know, maybe I could turn on that light and see if they're good diamonds. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. Look at that. They got that kind of bluish tint, and they, yeah, those are nice diamonds, man. There's some more, see? See how they light up? Diamonds glow, right? They glow. They don't just sparkle. 
they glow because there's a um, carbon-14 in the crystal lattice. And carbon-14 is the, uh, the radioactive isotope of carbon. And when light hits it, especially laser light like this, this is an LED light, light-emitting diodes, um, are what those little lasers are. And that's what they are. They're lasers uh, without being collimated. Um, and so the, the diamonds light up in um, LED light because that carbon-14 starts giving off electrons as uh, neutrons try to become protons by giving off electrons. And it has that definite, definite color of 24 karat gold. With diamonds on the toe, diamonds on the soles of her feet. Isn't that beautiful, huh? <laughs> A little elephant butt. Yeah. So, now we're going to look at this one. First of all, it is seriously heavy. I mean, seriously heavy. That's the first thing my wife said. And it's got a star sapphire on the on the front. It, it does actually have a star. I, I'm not sure how to make it here with my... Maybe not. Maybe it's like a cat's eye type chitoyancy. And some diamonds have that. So um, my guess is it might be a diamond. The rest of these certainly are. <laughs> See what I mean? And India has really nice diamonds. Like I do here in Arizona. I've got some beautiful green, blue, and red diamonds coming out of the Gila River. Look at that, man. Look at that. That's some sort of, um, like a um, glaze or something. It's not stone, I don't think. Might be. The whole thing, look at that. And they're all diamonds. Those are all diamonds. I don't know about the bigger red pieces, okay? I don't know what those are, but they certainly have uh, diamond-like characteristics with the secondary colors. And they're, you know, diamonds are not just little things, man. When you get them out of the fault line, um, they came up from deep, 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 deep underground. They didn't get squashed by an asteroid like... Uh, um, kimberlite diamonds. Kimberlite pipes are made by asteroid strikes on already solid ground, right? Um, and so it just it's just minerals in place, and it goes, <coughs> and and there's a cone of compression under where the where the asteroid hit, and it takes things that have carbon in them, and because of the high heat, everything else goes away. It, it vaporizes and leaves the carbon. And so that's how De Beers gets its diamonds. And, and I think they might be uh, actually from uh, the KT extinction event, which was uh, pretty much an all-out war between um, space-faring civilizations. The Earth had, had uh, real spaceships that went places. And we lost that fucker. Big time. That's what the KT extinction event was. It wasn't a comet, and it wasn't dinosaurs. It was a really, really big spaceship. It's now sticking out of Dineta, the land between the four sacred mountains of the Navajo. 
and somebody sat down behind it, and you can sort of see the skid marks on the on the surface of the planet, um, and blasted a hole through it while it was sitting on the ground to keep it down. Um, Swatting mosquitoes. We have a mosquito problem today. Jeez. Okay. Uh, anyway. And so uh, mm, we lost, and we are now stuck on planet Earth because uh, they don't want us running around hurting people. And that's what the benevolent government of Earth was doing, uh, is what I'm told. And, um,. And they had a conclave. They asked the people of this galaxy what they wanted to do. And it was pointed out that it was not the people of planet Earth. Uh, and and a, a person that I have been met stood in front of that conclave and begged for the people's lives. And the people of the galaxy were so pissed off, they said, it's their benevolent government. It's their responsibility. And they dropped asteroids on us. And our, because not because um, they were coming armed and dangerous and trying to force us to do things. They were trying to stop this huge ship with weapons that um, cause fusion in anything. Aiming microwaves at things can get them jiggling around as my... Um, my um, favorite teacher, Richard Feynman, used to say. And they jiggle faster and faster and faster. And they can be squeezed together or separated one way or the other. They can do other things with that, including spying on people. from space. They can see what you're doing. And because our thoughts are also magnetic, that's what microwaves are. They're a, mi they're a magnetic wave passing through space-time. And they can narrow it down by using two. Uh, look at the ears there. It would cause interference patterns between the two, uh, when two waveforms pass through each other, it causes interference patterns. And that those interference patterns can be so small, they can detect the, um, the north-south orientation of um, memories. Memories in our brains, and they whisper shit to people. When you hear those little good guys and bad guys in your head, that's the shit they're whispering at you folks. Because our benevolent government can't do it to other people, so they're doing it to us. And in the last 100,000 years, there have been three ice ages. And I believe, I think, I don't know, I think that those ice ages were caused by uh, major floods when the polar ice melted. Like it's about to do now. The fires in California and the fires in Australia, their summer last, which was our winter, 
<laughs> the, the, Australia burned, right? The whole damn continent from from something. And it put lots and lots of smoke in the air, which raises the albedo, the reflectiveness of the earth, and lowers the temperature. Also, of course, um, slowdowns of industry help because it's not putting so much carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide in the environment. Carbon monoxide wants to become carbon dioxide. And it also, when you put those layers of stuff in there, creates... Um, O3, ozone. O3 is oxygen, but three oxygens together. Two oxygens is stable. Three oxygens is extremely reactive, and that extra oxygen wants to latch on to carbon monoxide. And it creates more carbon dioxide than the plants of planet Earth, and including all the oceans, you know, with their with their layer of uh, um, living stuff on the surface, they cannot keep up with it, and it creates what's called a greenhouse effect, and the temperature rises, which is obvious um, with our weather at this point in time, and it is exactly matching my computer models that I developed over 20 years ago when I was learning how to program and it said the, that the weather would become extreme, not only hot weather, but cold weather and storms. But that's not the important part. The important part is the, the currents of the ocean carrying warm water under the ice caps. And they have a precarious balance of three degrees above zero in the Celsius scale, where water is most dense, and it keeps the ice floating. If that water temperature rises two degrees, it sinks, because the water is less dense than the ice. And the, those poles don't just fall off of one at a time, a little bit at a time, like it's doing now, right? It does it all at once because that layer of water underneath causes the ice to sink and it then becomes the same temperature. Water just wants to become homogenous in its temperature across the whole surface. And ice is water. And it sublimates from ice into water in one easy lesson <coughs> on both poles one day. And waves roll from one pole towards the other and they meet in the middle. Big waves, man. <laughs> big, big waves. So the question arises, you know, old Bill Cosby with his Noah story, Ever hear that one? No, it's out there. Wumpa, wumpa, zumpa. And God says, Noah, how long can you tread water? 